surprise, surprise, I have just randomly decided to come online early today because I get the evening off. Um, the Sabbath sing-along is going to be done by Dana Petrie and her family this evening. So I get to sit back and, and watch and be blessed this evening. But, you know, I couldn't help but think, I think I will just come on and um, share a song with you and just share some thoughts right quick um, because of what today is. I'm keenly aware that um, this Easter weekend really has little to do um, originally with Jesus, that it is a pagan um, festival, but Christians worldwide acknowledge um, Good Friday as the day Jesus died and Easter Sunday is the day that he rose. And right about now, um, it's just quarter past three in the afternoon here in Australia, Christ would have died on that Friday. Um, the Bible says that he was crucified at the third hour, that's about nine o'clock in the morning. And he spent about six hours on the cross, three of those in total darkness. From the sixth hour to the ninth hour was darkness. And um, I just want to share with you just a few little passages and a poem, and then I want to sing you a song just to really encapsulate uh, what Jesus would have been going through at this time. I'm in Luke, the Gospel of Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. There are four different accounts of Christ's life and his death and his resurrection. Um, Luke 23, uh, verse 44 says... Now it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour. The sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God saying, certainly this was a righteous man. The other Gospels earlier, um, Matthew and Mark, comment about how Christ called out, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Um, and I'm just trying to imagine what Christ was going through, taking on all of our sins. Thou, thou what killed him. That's what broke his heart and what, what caused him to die. Um, and just knowing that his father could not abide with him during that time when he was becoming sin for us, that the father had to separate himself um, and allow Christ to die for us, just absolutely crazy um, because he loved us. And, and to think really that, yeah, here the whole world is acknowledging Good Friday Easter Sunday, um, he rested in between the Sabbath, you know, he rested, the ground kept him, uh, the Sabbath kept him, he kept the Sabbath, you know, even in, in his death. And to think that we are, 2021 right now, we are this far away from that occasion or from his birth, um, you know, Time is marked by this man. We are in the year 2021 AD, the year of our Lord. Um, I, I was thinking today about a poem that I read years ago and that I'm going to sing for you. But this poem, I don't know if anyone's read it before. It's called One Solitary Life by James Allen Francis. And it was obviously written a little bit ago, and you'll see in the last section of the poem why, because he mentions 19 centuries have come and gone. But um, really just a beautiful poem that I think will minister to you um, before I sing. And it simply says, so one solitary life, it says he was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman, he grew up in another obscure village where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. 
when public opinion turned against him. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never went to college. He never visited a big city. He never traveled more than 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of these things, usually associated with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Nineteen centuries have come and gone, and today Jesus is the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that have ever marched, all the navies that have ever sailed, all the parliaments that have ever sat, all the kings that have ever reigned put together have not affected the life of mankind on earth as powerfully as that one solitary life. Just beautiful, just beautiful. I heard some years ago um, a song that my buddy Christy Sipek, who plays uh, for us on the sing-alongs, um, showed to me and asked me to learn. And it's sung through the eyes of a child who um, would have potentially witnessed that event. And um, it's, I hope I do it justice because it's a hard song to, to, to really deliver. Um, would have made sense to pre-record it and get it right rather than risk getting it wrong, doing it live. But it's a beautiful song by Nicole Norderman called Why. And um, just want to sing that for you and hope that you really consider what an amazing sacrifice Jesus made for you that he wants to be in a relationship with you he um, he paid the ultimate price and you know it's hard enough to lay down your life to be prepared prepared to give up your life for someone you love let alone for your enemies knowing that they may never accept you know that gift so whether you know Jesus or not, whether you acknowledge him in your life or not, know that this was just the most incredible gift he's given you, dying the death that we deserve, because we're not, we're not good, we're inherently bad, you know, so that we could live the life that he really deserves. So um, let's give this song a go. It's called Why, sung through the eyes of a child. to town the other day just me and my daddy he said I'd finally reached that age and I could ride next to him on a horse that of course was not quite as wide. We heard a crowd of people shouting, and so we stopped to find out why. And there was that man that my dad said he loved, but today there was fear 
in his eyes. So I said, Daddy, why are they screaming? Why are the faces of some of them beaming? Why is he dressed in that bright purple robe? I'll bet that crown hurts him Daddy, please, can't you do something? He looks as though he's gonna cry. You said he was stronger than all of those guys. Daddy, please tell me why. Why does everyone to die. And later that day, the sky grew cloudy, and Daddy said I should go inside. Somehow he knew things would get stormy. She 
hope you have just a really memorable and meaningful weekend just acknowledging um, what great sacrifice was made and what price was paid for you because you are worth it. Jesus loves you that much. And um, yeah, he just really wants to be in relationship with us. And I think, wow, nothing on this earth can be worth missing heaven when um, he just gave everything, everything for us. So my prayer for you all is that you really will just um, take time to pause and not just be, see this as a great holiday and a chance to just take time out. And, you know, it's not about, I read this morning, it's, it's not about the bunny. It's about the lamb, the sacrificial lamb that Jesus became uh, for us. So love to you all. Um, and if I love you this much and, and want the best for you, how much more does Jesus when he's the one that paid that price? Sabbath is coming. I'm looking forward to sitting back and being ministered to by the Petries this evening. So I'll join you all then, but have a blessed weekend.